Okay, so this is going to be a video showing you how to calculate chi-square. Okay, so, so yeah, we're going to be learning about chi-square. We're also going to be learning about how to calculate the uh, measures of association. Okay, so what we're going to do, if you remember from uh, Chapter 9's SPSS video, in order to calculate chi-square and the measure of associations, first thing you need to do is calculate uh, bivariate tables or crosstab. Okay. How do you calculate crosstab or bivariate tables? You're going to come up to Analyze. Click on Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, and then you're going to go to Crosstabs. Now, what we used last time was a relationship between degree as the independent variable and belief in the Bible as the dependent variable. Okay, so we had degree in the columns, Bible in the rows. Now degree is an ordinal level variable, Bible is um, a, a nominal level uh, variable. I think actually I never really even looked at that variable very much. So I think Bible, there, there might be some type of order to this. Let me look at the Word of God, inspired Word of God, or Book of Fables. Uh, so that's actually going to be uh, nominal because even though there kind of looks like uh, there's at least some type of uh, order to it, um, SPSS defined it as a nominal variable, and uh, or GSS defined it as a nominal variable, and it does appear to be a nominal variable, even though when you think about like, kind of looks like if there's an order, but kind of not. Okay, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna click on Analyze, Descriptive Statistics and Crosstabs. So we're gonna go back and we're gonna find degree. We're gonna put it as the independent variable and the Bible as the dependent variable. As you all remember from last week, we're gonna click Cells, calculate the percentages for the columns, and then that's how you go about creating a crosstab. So you can read and interpret. But let's just say you wanna, mathematically determine whether or not there's a relationship. What you need to do is calculate chi-square and calculate the measure of association. Okay. Now, the way you go about calculating chi-square and the measure of association is you're going to come up here to this top right and you're going to click statistics. You're going to click statistics and then you're going to click chi-square. Now, if you have um, just two ordinal level variables, like your independent variable and your dependent variable is ordinal, you're going to use gamma. Okay, but seeing as how one of our variables is nominal, we can't use gamma. So what we're gonna use is we're gonna use lambda and Kramer's V. So lambda, we're gonna click check lambda, and we're gonna check phi Kramer's V. Okay, so I'm gonna click check those two, I'm gonna press continue, and then I'm going to press okay. Okay, so now it has produced a, this process output has produced a cross tab for me, same percentages that we saw in chapter nine. And then it gave me the chi-square, the value of the chi-square, which is 78.482, was 12 degrees of freedom. Now, you, again, you could take this to the chi-square distribution chart that we learned about in lecture, but I don't really need to do that because it is already telling me that the significance level is 0 0.000. And what that means is that I can reject, because that's kind of like our p-value, that I can reject the 0.05, the 0.01, the 0.001 alpha level. So I, I don't actually need to go to the textbook. But if you remember uh, from the chi-square distribution, you would find the 12 degrees of freedom and then calculate the chi-square statistic that we calculated, which would be here, then you compare it to that chi-critical. But we don't need to do that. Okay, so we have the p-value here, and we have the significance level here. Um, now, having said that, um, here we have two measures of association. We have both lambda and we have, we have lambda here. We have Kramer's V down here. Now, the default is lambda. As we discussed in class, lambda is a better measure of association. Um, now, if you also remember what we discussed in class, is that lambda is a, what we refer to as an asymmetrical measure of association. Which means that if you specify degree as the independent variable, you're going to get one lambda. Then if you specify Bible as the independent variable, you're going to get a whole nother lambda, okay? 
Now we have we specified that Bible feelings throughout the Bible is the dependent variable, and that degree was the independent variable. So it tell it gives us both lambdas. It gives us the lambda if feelings about the Bible is a dependent variable, and our and our value of our lambda is 0 0.045. It also gives us the the value of the lambda if a degree is a dependent variable, which it wasn't. So we we don't really need to be concerned about this. But if it was, a lambda wouldn't work. It'd just be 0 0.000, but we don't necessarily have to worry about that. The reason why I calculated both lambda and Kramer's V is because if our lambda had been zero, more often than not, lambda is zero than it isn't. So lambda doesn't work a lot. And when lambda doesn't work, you're going to default to Kramer's V. Okay. Um, but since lambda did work, um, we see that it's a 0 0.045, which means that there is a weak relationship between degree and uh, feelings about the Bible. Okay, So that's how you do it if you have a either two nominal level variables or you have a ordinal and a nominal level variable. Now let's just say you have two ordinal level variables. You're not going to calculate lambda or Kramer's V. You're going to calculate gamma. Or if you have a dichotomous nominal and an ordinal variable, which is a dichotomous nominal means that it's a nominal variable, but there's only two options. Example being like sex, yes and no, or sex, you know, male and female, or like another variable is asking yes or no. There's only yes or no in those two options. So you could, treat that, you could treat that dichotomous nominal variable as if it's ordinal for the purpose of calculating uh, gamma. So what we're going to do here is uh, we're going to show you how to calculate gamma. So go to descriptive statistics, go to cross tabs, and I'm going to, instead of like using FIBO, I'm going to try to find a ordinal level variable. Okay, um, so I guess I'll look at uh, degree in health. So I'm going to click health into the rows. Now the cells are already calculated with the column percentages, so we're good with that. Then I'm going to click on statistics. Now here, I'm still going to keep the chi-square, but I'm going to get rid of the phi and Kramer's V and then the lambda, and I'm going to calculate gamma this time. Because I want to see, this will tell me whether or not there's a relationship, or the strength of the relationship between degree and health. I'm going to press OK. I'm going to press OK. Now, so this is the cross tab that it produced for me. Here we see that. As your degree increases, it's a general pattern that as your degree increases, your health outcomes increase in the sense that only about 15% of people who have less than high school education said that they were in excellent health. Now you compare that to somebody with a graduate degree. 38% of those people uh, say that they're in excellent health. And uh, of course, uh, if you compare that to people who have um, less than high school, levels of education, 6.6% .6 of them said that they're in poor health, and you compare that to only like 0.9% of people who are, have graduate levels of education. And of course, you see it also for people who just said, oh, I'm just in fair health. People who have less than high school levels of education were much more likely to say that they're in fair or poor health than people who have graduate degrees. So there clearly appears to be a relationship between your degree as the independent variable and your health outcomes, okay? Now again, going to the chi-square, we can see that the value of the chi-square is 68.602 with 12 degrees of freedom, which means that this relationship is statistically significant at the 0 0.05, 0 0.01, and the 0 0.001 alpha level. So you can certainly reject the null hypothesis that there is no relationship between the two variables. Um, and then gamma suggests that there's a negative 0.296 uh, so it's negative 0.296, which means that it's a weak to moderate relationship between degree and condition of health. Okay? Now, if you remember, I think it's like, uh, there was this chart that I showed you all in lecture. You're gonna use that chart to determine the strength of the association. So that's how I know it's a weak to moderate. I just kind of have that chart memorized. Now it's a negative relationship. Now you might be thinking to yourself, well, how is this a negative relationship? It appears that as you're education level increases, your health outcomes increase as well. And that is true. As your education level increases, your health outcomes do increase. We're seeing that. But of course, gamma is telling us that the, that the, that the relationship is negative, that it's reversed, that as your health outcomes increase, 
or as your education level increases, your health outcomes decrease, because that's what a negative relationship is. That is, as one variable increases, the other one decreases. So how do you reconcile this negative gamma that we see here, okay? And the way that you understand this is that you need to understand how the general social survey coded these variables, okay? So we know that a positive relationship is as one variable goes up, the other one goes up, and a negative relationship is as one variable goes up, the other one goes down. Now, when we look at degree, we need to understand how degree is coded. So degree is coded, so I'm going to come to the variable uh, view, data view window, and I'm going to click on degree. I'm going to like look at variable information, so I'm going to right click, click on variable information. So as we can see, less than high school is coded as zero, okay? High school is one, junior college two, bachelor's three, graduate level four, and these seven, eight, nine, um, those are just kind of like missing variables, so those aren't important. So as you can see that as your education level increases, the number increases as well. So this is kind of ascending. Hopefully that makes sense to everybody. That is, as your education level increases, the number you're assigned also increases. But if you look at health, it's actually the reverse. So if we come over to health, and then we right click. Variable information, so as you can see, it's kind of like reverse in the sense that excellent health is one, and then good health is two, and then fair health is three, and then poor health is four. So what we're seeing here is that as your health outcomes increase, or like as you're, the healthier you are, the lower your number is. So what it's doing when it's giving you this negative number, it's saying that there is a an inverse or negative relationship in the sense that as your health outcomes increase, those numbers increase, right? So you're, say you're at a graduate degree, you're at like number four or number five or whatever that was. Then the number for your health decreases, but as the number of your health decreases, you're actually, you're, you're getting healthier, if that makes sense. So, you know, let's so say you have a four, let's say four is graduate level, and then one is excellent health. So as your education level increases, your health outcomes, the, the, they don't decrease, but the number assigned decreases, but you're actually still healthier. Um, hopefully that makes sense to people because I think a lot of times students, they see that negative number, and then they don't really understand how the variables are coded, and then they think, well, this is the exact opposite, there's something wrong, I'm not interpreting it right, or something like that. But actually, you just need to understand how it is that these different variables are coded to, to make sense out of that negative relationship sometimes. Okay, um, we said that, so that's how we read and interpret the output, the gamma, the chi-square, gamma's for ordinal or dichotomous nominal variables, and then lambda and Kramer's v is for uh, nominal level variables.